distilled down. I mean, it's very pure and, and it's always intense and it's always a good game. I have yet to see a Navy Air Force game that bored me. I mean, it's, um, you know, you know, Coach Munkin's done a great job at, Air, uh, at Army mm -hmm. the last couple of years and, and brought Army up. But for many years, it was us and them contending for the CIC. And, um, you know, they're a really good program. Uh, coach Calhoun's a really good coach. Uh, we know a lot of their kids. They know a lot of our kids from recruiting. Uh, their staff's been together a long time. Our staff's been together a long time. But like you said, Wax, all the games are going to be a battle. You know, they'll have some trick plays. We'll have some trick stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not what's going to win the game. You know what I mean? It's, they're always close, hard-fought games. We have a tremendous amount of respect for them and their program. And we know that this is it's going to be a battle. We don't look at the records. We don't look at anything. We just look at the game on Saturday and get ready for that. And we know that they're going to give us our best, and, and we're going to give them our best. You know what I thought was interesting? And during your 11 years as head coach, you've coached Troy Calhoun more than anyone. <laughs> I mean, there's other programs that you've played every year, but they've had different coaches. But this is probably you've not coached against any one head coach more than Troy. Have you gotten to know him pretty well? Do you talk to him on the game days? Or would you walk over on the field and say hi? Yeah, we have great conversations because, you know, we talk about similar things, you know, things that they're going through in the hall. And, mm -hmm. you know, I ask him questions, how they do certain things and vice versa, you know, because we, we're, we're both at service academies. So we just talk more about stuff off the field, right? you know, stuff that they have to deal with, stuff that we have to deal with and how he handles it. And, you know, I, I enjoy talking to Troy. Obviously, we want to beat the crap out of them. They want to beat the crap out of us. But I have tremendous amount of respect for him. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, people talk about your longevity, which is rare in this environment of college football. But he's right there with you in terms of tenure. I mean, he actually might be a year ahead of you. He is. But, I, mean, he's, um, he's, I mean, do you have some respect for him that he's hung in at Air Force for whatever it is, 12 years? Just knowing how hard it is to win at the D1 level at any school is super hard. And at the service academy to play in their league, I have a, I mean, you know, the kind of kids that they're playing against with the military restrictions that you have. And, you know, uh, I guarantee you Boise State and San Diego State aren't worried about, you know, some of the survival things that they have to go through in the summer right. with their kids that they have to do. And so for him to be able to win for that long, I mean, it's, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, he's done a great job over the years. Um, the thing about the defensive coordinator, he decided not to announce that, reveal that, which is a little odd. But a, what do you think is the purpose of that, and is it is it working in this instance? As you sit here trying to figure out, you can't really do a history. I guess you can do a history on every single one of their defensive staff members to guess, right? Well, we know a lot of their guys on their staff. Um, they've been there a while. You know, Coach Nor, who's new, but he's been there for a year. Obviously, he's an academy grad, so you know him. Um, you know, Coach Wisniewski used to play there, and so the guys that are new, we kind of already know. Um, as you watched it, there a lot of their tendencies or a lot of their philosophy is similar to what they've done in the past. Will it be exactly like Coach Russ? No, it's like on our. If somebody else was calling the plays, or Coach Ingram or Coach O'Rourke mm -hmm. or Coach Okaitis, even though it's our offense, it might be slightly different than how Ivan does it. And, but it's still a core offense, and I think it's the same thing in our defense. It's Air Force's defense. There might be some little changes depending on who's calling it, but you know we'll get to the game and see what they're doing. Well, as long as I've been covering this game, they've come out in an odd front. I mean, do you have to kind of presume that'll be the case again until you see otherwise? I mean, you, you get ready for everything, though. I mean, you get ready for everything. Uh, Army was an odd front every time we played them and we got to the game. Uh, you know, they got an even front, but they had a month to get ready for the game. Right. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we'll see. We'll see what they do. With, and we'll just try to adjust from there. Do you think a lot of this is more about Navy? I mean, I think as you move into this game, which you probably have to say to yourself is we have yet to play a complete game. We've yeah. yet to really reduce the mistakes, just little things here and there, to turn whatever it be. Do you think if, if you just say, look, Navy come out and play the best possible game, no mistakes, no turnovers, Run the offense, you know, do you think that's the number one way to start with this? Yeah, and I'm sure they'll say the same thing. I'm sure they'll say the same thing that they haven't played their complete game and they got to do those things. So, but yes, I mean, you, you always got to take care of yourself first. And, you know, we had two really close games. One game we won by a point, we got four turnovers and we didn't turn the ball over. The other game we lost by a point, we had three turnovers, they had one and we lost, right. you know, so, 
the tendencies for us to win never change. You know, just not beating ourselves and playing our butts off, and hopefully we win. But uh, we can't beat ourselves. And I, again, I'm sure they're saying the same thing. Um, and just in terms of uh, playing out there, and the weather could be a pro an issue from what I'm hearing. Um, do you you always worry about that out there, right? Yeah, you always do. But I mean, what can you do? I mean, you just get ready for a game. Um, you know, we've been there when it's been rainy. Been there when it's been a fog. We've been there when uh, windy. You know, that, those kind of things you can't worry about too much because you can't control that. We just got to be prepared the best we can. All right. And last but not least, I'm doing a little thing on Jay, um, uh, Andrew Wood, who's been the semifinalist for this very prestigious award. It's academic based. Um, he really is an amazing student here. What can you say about Andrew, you know, who's a senior and has been a three-year starter and apparently he's getting the job done over in the classroom? Uh, very proud of him as a young man. You know, early on he was a high, high recruit, had SEC offers, had a Mississippi State offer. I mean, so he's one of our more highly recruited kids. Early on, wasn't sure if he wanted to be here. Proud of him, he stuck it out. You know, he's going to be a four-year starter. Uh, done well in the hall academically and militarily. I'm just really proud of him, and he's well deserving to be in this, you know, in the, in the running for this uh, honor. But I mean, he's deserved it, he's earned it. Uh, I think we're doing some good things. I mean, we, we play uh, and we play 70, 80 snaps. People aren't perfect, people are going to make mistakes. Uh, I think we're doing some good things. We're running the ball, we a lot of yards, we're doing great in the red zone. Are we doing good enough? No. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep coaching them? Yes. Uh, but I'm excited about the group. I'm excited about the potential we have. Uh, we're playing more guys than we've ever played. We're rotating guys. Um, is it perfect? No. Does it need to get better? Yes. Um, are we heading in the right direction? Heck yeah. Well, I was going to say, in terms of the running game in general, I mean, I think coaches said, I mean, there's been good signs, right? but there's, it's been inconsistent would probably be the best word. At least right. that's the co word Coach Nehemiah has used. Right. From your standpoint, how do you get that consistency that you need? Keep coaching them. Keep, hold, keep holding them accountable. Uh, and the beauty we have now is we have depth. Mm -hmm. So now playing time can be affected. So if we have guys that aren't doing what they're supposed to do or guys that aren't uh, producing the way they need to produce, then we've got other guys that, that we can put in. In the past, we've had times where we didn't have that luxury, mm -hmm. where we just kind of had to go with what we, you know, with what we had. So, um, you know, we're, we've made some adjustments to the starting lineup as we've gone. Uh, there may be some for this weekend as well. So we're going to keep coaching them. We'll hold them accountable. And, you know, obviously playing time depends on it. But uh, overall, I'm pleased with the progress we're making. Mm -hmm. uh, is it where we want it to be? Probably will never be, but uh, we're, we're heading in the right direction. Last on this topic, um, we talked about seeing an odd front. A lot of times when you play Air Force, at least over traditionally over the right. years, they've been odd front. Do you feel good about Ford going and playing odd front? Yeah. I, I presume he has at some point this season, right? Right. Uh, Hawaii was odd front. Uh, I'm trying to think who we played after that. Memphis. He's uh, been covered. covered up. Yeah, he was mm -hmm. covered there. And, and he's he was done covered, okay. held his own? He's done. Yeah, he's done well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think so. I think he's going to do well. Okay. Um, now, with regard to Andrew, obviously the, the kind of the the reason I'm doing the story is he's up for that a very prestigious right. award. The Campbell um, Award. Right. I mean, it shows what a good scholar athlete he right. is. Can you kind of talk about that with Andrew? Right. You know, he's... To be honest with you, he's kind of everything you look for in a service academy football player, in a Navy football player. He's smart. He does great in the classroom. Um, he tries his best on the football field. He's a really good football player. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but he's in his third year as a, a full-time starter. He's mm -hmm. played in every game of his career here, I think, played special teams as a freshman. Uh, so I'm pleased with you know everything he does, mm -hmm. from his play to the kind of person he is, what he stands for. He's a great representative for the academy uh, and our football team. I know you recruited Andrew, and he had some pretty big offers, SEC, Big Ten schools. Um, how did What made you even think, hey, we can get this kid? Right. And how did you get this kid out away from, you know, obviously big Power Five conference teams? Um, for one, he, he had an interest in the Naval Academy. So he came to camp here. He's got an older brother that's a graduate of the Coast Guard Academy who played there. I think he'll tell you he's always wanted to fly. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, his interest and I think we had the things that he was looking for and we recruited him hard. And, um, you know, I think after visiting a few times and coming to games, I think that he realized this was kind of what he wanted to do. And as a player, do you feel he's lived up to the advanced billing of being this big time recruit? I think so. I mean, he's played in every game of his career and That's I can't remember the last guy doing that here. Do you uh, remember the last guy who was a three-year starter on the offensive line? 
I mean, Jake, might be Jake a, Zuzak may have been the Zuzak, last guy. Okay. Yeah, Tanner Fleming, some of those guys. So it's, it's been a few years since right. we've since But we've it is a that. rarity. It is a rarity. Yeah, he's done a great job. And what would you say are his best attributes as a lineman? What makes him a good football player? Uh, he's, a, he's a big kid that can move. I right. mean, you, not, not many guys are 6'4", 300 pounds that can move as well as he can. And he's smart, too, so he understands the offense inside out. Uh, and he's conscientious, and he cares, and he, he does his best on every snap. So. I don't know, what else could you ask for? All right. Paul Johnson used to say book smart doesn't translate into football smart. In this instance, does he have both? He's got them both. Right. He's got it all. I mean, he, he knows, he understands the game. He, it's not been a struggle for him to figure it all out. No, he, he knows it inside out. And he asked me a lot of questions that maybe I should have covered at times. So he kind of keeps me in line as well. And uh, Coach O'Rourke as well. Coach O'Rourke's done a great job with him. And uh, he does a great job. Just tell me, A, how do you feel? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, the bye week uh, helped a lot. I think the team can uh, can attest to that, so I think we're feel, feeling pretty good going in there for us. Um, in terms of the offense, obviously, I, I think coach has said he's still not consistent, still trying to find that that you know, you guys are usually like a well-oiled machine about mm -hmm. this time of the season. Can you talk about that a little bit, Malcolm? Uh, I, I, we can't control that other than coming out of practice every day uh, and trying to trying our best. Uh, coaches uh, giving us a saying that we we got to cash cash out on Saturday, so. Um, during the week, we got to put as much money as we can in, into the bank. So, mm -hmm. just trying to do that. Do you feel good that you know you're ready for the offense here in this very important game to really come together and have its best effort of the season so far? Yeah, I feel like uh, we're doing really well in practice. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. Something feels different. Uh, I feel like everybody knows what they're doing. Uh, it's a simple game plan. So, uh, hopefully, we can go out there and execute and, and have success. So, obviously, you have started a service academy game, so you have that experience, but. Your thoughts on going out there and you know starting a quarterback against Air Force? Obviously, it's going to be a great experience, something new for you, right? Right. Um, just going out there and performing, uh, you know, executing what we do in practice, uh, not making it bigger than what it is, but realizing that it's a big game. So that's it. Um, I know that coaches talked about they don't have a <laughs> defensive coordinator that they've named. So do you think you just work on everything and you know like you always do, you basically practice like you could see any kind of defensive alignment? Right. I mean, that's pretty much what we do all year. Um, some teams. We have a good uh, idea of what they're going to come out in. Uh, but uh, overall, yeah, we're just preparing for whatever they may come out in. So coming off of SMU, I mean, and there were some good things and some bad things offensively, what is kind of the basic message that Coach Nehemiah, Coach Jasper, and then even the team leaders in, in, within the offense have said that we got to do here? Uh, we got to cut, cut out the simple mistakes. Uh, I think that's the only thing that's holding us back is uh, simple little mistakes here and there. Every play, every once in a while, mm -hmm. uh, hurts us a lot. Uh, we're offense that, that can't afford that, can't afford penalties and stuff like that. So um, just cutting it back on that, and I feel like uh, um, we'll, be, we'll be good. Right, like the negative plays is what you're exactly. kind of saying. That, you know, a mistake that leads to a tackle for loss or a penalty, that said, those are the killers, exactly. aren't they? The exactly. Killers. That, hurt, that hurts a lot for a team that runs the ball and, and uh, holds the clock. So. Well, all right. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about this very prestigious award that you're up for being a semifinalist. Can you just talk about the honor of just being on that list? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a huge honor. Um, you spent four years here uh, grinding out as a grind here doing football. And I mean, coming here to do academics was one of the main choices, I, one of the main reasons I came here. So just just to be honored for the, all the hard work that I've put in here is just a huge honor. So take me back to how, the, your thought process, because obviously, when people see the list of schools that were recruiting you, they wouldn't think Navy, you'd end up at Navy. I right. mean, you had SEC, Big Ten offers. Uh, how did you end up here? Why did you end up here? Right. Uh, so my brother was at the Coast Guard Academy yeah, at the time. And what's his name? Uh, Kyle. Kyle, and he played yeah, football he for played, them? He played football and baseball out there. But uh, So that was one of the uh, main things, just kind of getting around the service academies. But You had some I, exposure to ex Some exposure, because uh, a lot of people don't know about them. But mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to fly pretty much my whole life since I've been about eight or nine so and then just doing research I mean it's just really just gave me the best opportunity to do it and play good football what 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 developed this love of desire to fly at such a young age uh so I mean from from what I can remember I remember hearing grandpa tell stories he was a navigator in the Korean War for the Navy in, a, in an airplane he didn't actually fly but uh, I remember third grade we went to an air show uh, I think the Blue Angels were flying um, so that really just solidified aviation um, and the whole family just had an interest in flying the whole life. So was there, I mean, if you weren't here, where do you think you would have ended up? I think Vanderbilt was listed as a school that you kind of chose Navy over, but have you ever really thought about if you weren't here, where, which one you would have ended up at? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, each one brought, brought different aspects to the table, um, but I'd, I'd probably say Purdue. Really? Uh, yeah, okay. I'd probably end up there. 
And in terms of, you know, when we talk academics, I, your major again, remind me? It's operations research. What if she is what? <laughs> uh, so it, I get that question a lot. Um, yeah, because I have no clue. <laughs> What it comes down to, um, a lot of a lot of the ways I describe it to people is like industrial engineering. You'll hear that a lot of places, um, UPS, FedEx, mm -hmm. optimizing, maximizing, just different equations, trying to figure out logistically how to do stuff. So, do you want to go to the supply school? Uh, no, I, do, I definitely want to do aviation, um, but that's just obviously right because that's to keep what, in mind. what you're talking about is would translate to that. Right. What on the aviation note? I mean, you're a big guy. I don't know what the rules are. Have they told you about it? I mean, are they going to let you fly? Uh, they'll definitely let me fly. Uh, so just doing pre-coms last year, uh, figuring out. So um, as far as what I want to fly, I don't know. So I think it's about six weeks until we find out service selection. So we'll see then. Okay. So but you, all you do is put in naval aviation and the other stuff gets sorted out later. If right. you get that assignment, then they'll start talking school. about what could end up happening. Right. Um, yes, sir. Coach Niamat said that early on he wasn't sure if you really wanted to be here. Can you talk about what he meant by that? Uh, I mean, it's a struggle. Uh, I think that's something a lot of people uh, that come through here face. Um, but it's just everybody's own journey. You just rely on the family. Uh, my brother, my mom, my fiance just helped me through. Just everybody here, people on the football team, just anybody could help me. So, I mean, I think that's something everybody goes through. And as you go through that, you kind of see on the, on the back end that everything's worth it. How have you been able to maintain such a high GPA while playing football, doing all the military that's asked of you, how, how do you, what's the secret? Right, uh, I mean, like like I said, and, um, it's one of the main reasons I came here, so when I'm when I'm up late at night trying to study for a test and thinking about it, uh, it makes it a little easier. Mm -hmm. And when the word got out that you were really smart, how many of the football players want you to tutor them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few, um, I know I'm, I'm helping out a couple people, so and just as they come ask them, just a few. Um, in terms of football, the three-year starter, uh, coach said he thinks you've played in every game of your career. Is that correct? Is a freshman on PAT? I do believe so. Right. Sure. Can you, has it worked out as well as you could have thought? I mean, obviously, you've lived up to your billing as a big-time recruit. Uh, I definitely say so. Um, it's It's been an experience and that I've enjoyed uh, throughout my time here, so I definitely say it's been worth it. So we'll ask Mr. Strassmeyer, if he, does he get invited to New York, or has he got to make another cut on this? Uh, another cut. Right. It's so, also Army-Navy week. All right, but it is in New York, right? It's in New York, yeah. Oh, so we don't even know. He's not going to be able to go, even if... I don't know. Right. <laughs> well... We'll cross that bridge. Are you hopeful to make the next cut and be a finalist? I guess, would it be the next level? Uh, I don't think anybody's hopeful, but we'll just see. And uh, last but not least, I mean, just have you enjoyed the experience? Have you looked back upon it? Do you think you made the right decision? Definitely. Uh, I mean, looking back on it, I mean, like I said, so just... Being on the other side of it uh, four short years ago, and you just starting it up, uh, just looking back, definitely made the right decision, no regrets. And uh, Air Force is coming up. How big is it for the offensive line to dominate the trenches in this one? Uh, it's huge. It's always huge um, just to be able to, to impose our will and just play as hard as we can. Um, so, I mean, just come back, just prepare, prepare for them, perfect preparation, like we said.